Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to fit sound into a Backman 08. People have asked me for a sound fitting guide for these for quite a long time and it's something that I've never done because I thought it might be a bit too complicated to show in a video. But I've decided to just show it in its most simple form without a style either or anything. And uh, I guess it is something that's fairly easy to do and something that most people should be able to do at home with the tools that they've got. So I'm going to use one of the Locksound 5 micros. I'm going to use the ESU Hi-Fi sound in this model because it's one of the um, one of the really cheap models from Rails of Sheffield. It ran off for, I think it was $79.99 when I bought it. Um, I know quite a few people have bought them because they've asked me about sound for them. Um, so I'm going to use the Locksound 5 Micro with the ESU Hi-Fi sound which is the ESU's own sound file. Um, it's very good actually. Um, and I'm also going to use one of these 20 by 14 speakers like I used in the Class 11 recently. So, first thing to do is, I've already done it on this one actually, because I've already been inside to have a quick look. But, you want to move this little white pipe thing out of the hole where it sits here. And I always tuck it just above the little uh, handrail here, just because it keeps it out of the way and make sure that you're not going to trap it when you put the body back on. Next thing to do is to get a prising tool and you just want to get it under the rear coupling and flick that out and then you want to get a magnetic tip screwdriver ideally and take that screw out. Uh, the magnetic part's useful there because it just stops the screw falling off and it helps you get it from what's quite a deep hole. So. I'll just take that out and then there's a clip as well so you'll see the clip just here where my finger is it's quite hard to undo the clip without breaking it sometimes you can just push at the back and pull it up but it looks like this might be a bit too tight so it's quite hard but I'm gonna have to try and go at it from both angles so kind of push push the body away whilst I prise the clip away but it is easy to break them but I think I've got away with it this time yeah if you do break it it's not the end of the world because the screws enough to hold it anyway but it just means it'll hold itself on before you put the screw in otherwise so once the body's off there's a few things that I usually do first thing that I'm gonna do is all these little capacitors they're really for when it's on analog so i'm going to cut them off because i do think it runs slightly better without them and uh, it gives you just a little bit more space as well i've already taken the blanking plug out of this one because like i said i did have a quick look inside it just to make sure i knew what i was getting, knew what I was getting into before i started the video so i'm gonna just snip them off sort of as close to the end as possible so you don't have loads of like sharp bits of metal sticking out but you also want to be careful that you don't accidentally snip any other wires while you're doing it because then you're going to make yourself more work so they're out of the way now and then the other thing that I've done which I do find helps a lot is the inside of the exhaust ports normally sort of a little block which sticks out into the inside of the shell but I've ground that off with a Dremel just a little grinding wheel thing on the Dremel um, and it it makes you a bit of space which you do need really but it also helps to uh, let the sound out so it'll sound better for it as well so there's not really any reason to have that solid exhaust, you might as well open it up. So next thing to do is to turn your attention to the decoder. So these come on a ribbon cable, so it's quite thin, but you also have to be quite careful how you bend it. And then the speaker is just on normal wires. If you're buying the decoder from me, I've added this uh, speaker as a free option. So if you want to choose one of the speaker upgrades, you can choose this one and I can connect it for you. 
so it just makes it a little bit easier to fit I think using that speaker definitely than the um, sugar cube which you'd have to build so start by putting in your decoder and then it's just a case of making use of the space that's left so I'm gonna get a couple of sticky dots and use these for the decoder always use these for the decoder if you can rather than black tack because the black tack will get hot and melt whereas the sticky dots might stick to your finger like this one has but you can um, they'll withstand a bit of heat so it's just a little bit better to use on the decoder so I'm gonna stick that to the back there oops so it doesn't need to be perfectly flat but basically tucks in the little space um, sort of next to the 8 pin socket and then the speaker I'm going to put a sticky dot on that as well just one should do and I'm going to stick that to the actual 8 pin socket so that'll go there and then the other thing that you've got to worry about is just getting the wires out of the way. So I'm going to start by just folding the, the speaker wires and the purple wire. You can either cut it off or just do what I'm doing and tape it out of the way. And then I'll show you once I've stuck it on, it might be easier to see. But just use a bit of Capson tape. Or you could probably even use Sally tape if that's all you had. And you can just see I've taped it on top of the motor out of the way. There's, I probably needed to pull it a bit tighter actually, so I might just do that. This tape's quite good, so you can peel it off and it'll usually still have enough stickiness to stick back. But yeah, you just want it fairly tight so that the uh, if you have too much play in the wires, there's a chance that it might sag down and touch the flywheel, which you don't want. So that's a little bit better. And then the ribbon cable just needs sort of bending out of the way. But you need to try and, when you're bending it, a ribbon cable, you just want to try and keep it flat and just bend it back on itself. You don't want to twist it or anything because that's how they end up damaged. I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to hold that as well. Don't need to be perfect because the body will sort of hold it in place anyway. But it's just so that you can get the body back on easily. So I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. So if you look at it from the front, it probably looks like it overhangs a little bit over the sides. But you should have enough space to uh, get the body back on. So that's what I'm going to do now. The other thing to just check when you're doing it is to make sure that you've got space between the flywheel and all the wires. Because if it looks like any of those are going to touch, like I say, that'll cause you problems. It'll make a bit of a noise at first, but eventually it'll probably rub through the insulation on the wire and possibly cause electrical problems later on. So the uh, it's tight, like I mentioned, but it will fit back over now, I think. It's always something that it catches on. Just push the uh, decoder a little bit further across. Probably the hardest bit this. I think we've done it. So now it's just a case of getting the front little uh, clip back in which sits just under the buffer beam. Make sure that sits underneath and then push it down at the back. You have to just push the back of the cabin slightly to make sure the clip goes under and then push down till it clicks if you've lost your screw like I say you're not going to get that click uh, sorry not your screw, your clip 
but the screw will hold it. So I'm going to put the screw back in now. And the coupling. And that's it. It's not as bad as you think. So oh, the last thing to do, that little um, white pipe, it might be a different colour on your model, but that little pipe, you just want to push it back into the, the hole that's there. And then it'll sit back in. You'd never know that it had been bent out of place. I often see these coming for sound fitting, where somebody's previously fitted a, a normal DCC decoder and they've snapped this piece off. So it's really important to take that out before you start, otherwise you will damage it. And it's a shame because it's a nice bit of detail. But yeah, that's that's it. That's how to fit sound to an 08. If you want to stay alive and things, I've done written guides on the website. Um, it's not impossible to do at home either, but you need a bit more experience maybe to do it. Obviously, I can fit them as well if you're uh, struggling or if you think you're going to struggle. So just get in touch through the website or through my Facebook page and Instagram if that's preferable. And I'll do a little video of this model running around the layout now. Hope it's helped people and thank you for watching.